Darshan Mehta is now standing by with a final scorecard of what did well, what didn't and what just about managed to meet estimates. Darshan, good morning. Yeah, good morning, Neeraj. Uh, not the best of earnings seasons. Uh, I think we, we did uh, uh, the, the first thing when, when it was 44 companies. Now the entire 50 companies have come out with numbers. So what we're seeing this time around, uh, close to half of them have come in line with uh, numbers with in, which were in line with estimates. Uh, 11 was strong and uh, 16 were weak. What is surprising is that the number of companies which report strong numbers have gr gradually gone down if you see for the past three quarters and the number of companies that came out with weak set of numbers is pretty much the highest that you saw in the last five quarters so it's not the best of earnings season so far as far as the other trends are concerned uh, which were the companies that managed to come out with strong numbers weak numbers so you can clearly see that you know is the yellow and red that dominate uh, and the red one is pretty much just one line and, and surprisingly some of the private sector corporates uh, uh, facing banks uh, uh, did well uh, Dr. Reddy's, uh, the, optically the numbers were good, but overall, if you look at the commentary, not the best of commentaries. Uh, some of the metal counters, some of uh, the port counters doing well. Uh, IT tech, uh, IT tech, uh, as well as uh, some of the financials are pretty much in terms of numbers which were in line. So that's uh, the broad trend that you're seeing. Now, this is interesting. Uh, uh, f first quarter, the actual EPS was 114.3, but this was on account of big loss by SBI. Otherwise, it was above the 120 level. Uh, when we started second quarter and uh, this is the first day of uh, of the month that one that time the number was 129.1 when the actual earning season started and that was october 10th that was when z was that was the first nifty company to come out with numbers they came out with numbers the estimate was 124 and finally where have we ended we ended at almost uh, 121.4 so we missed the earnings estimate uh, that uh, uh, by by a mile as far as what what the what was anticipated at the start of the second quarter and even what was started when the earning season started so that's the actual scorecard for you in terms of EPS. Uh, what caused the EPS uh, cuts? Uh, uh, Sun Pharma reported a loss this time around. Grasim also uh, came out with a weak set of numbers as far as the recurring EPS is, uh, recurring is concerned. Tata Motors and the oil marketing company. So these were the major contributors why the EPS came down uh, this time around for the Nifty. Now, uh, what have been the EPS cuts uh, during, the, uh, during the second quarter? This is from the start of uh, uh, from October 10th uh, till now. Uh, what were the cuts that have come in? Tata Motors the EPS cuts have been 52 percent. Uh, Cipla, uh, uh, the EPS is down 12 percent. Vedanta, Ultratech, and Hero Motor Corp. So these are the companies in which there has been an EPS cut that's come in, and an EPS hike is seen in companies like Grasim, Tata Steel, Dr. Eddie's Gale, and JSW Steel. So that's the trend that we're seeing this time. So let's try and divide these sectors, Darshan. Uh, which ones managed to meet or surpass estimates and which ones failed to do so? Yeah, so uh, L&T strong set of numbers. Uh, construction and infra only company year post strong growth uh, with uh, traction in that was seen as far as the order flow is concerned. So that was the first company that, uh, you know, you, you'd have to give a thumbs up this time around. Uh, Adani Ports uh, was the other one. Uh, uh, stronger, higher cargo uh, business uh, boost the financials for Adani Ports this time around. So as, as a pack uh, that did well, Media did well. Uh, Z is the only company there. Post strong quarters. Post uh, after three muted quarters, it came out with a number which was strong this time around. Uh, strong growth both on the domestic and the ad revenue front. So uh, media again, we give it a thumbs up. Uh, uh, in line, uh, HUL, uh, the, the consumer name, not the best of numbers. Uh, profit growth of uh, 11, profit up in 19%, which was in line with estimates. Uh, ITC, the triggered volume was strong, but the other businesses uh, didn't manage to disappoint. And even HUL, even the volume growth was strong the financials a similar case with uh, uh, Asian paints strong volume growth but the financials actually not uh, the most encouraging margin hit on Titan this time around so the consumer play this time around has been has been lackluster the other story is uh, is basically the agri story uh, pushed uh, uh, it, it, it did well uh, in uh, Latin America this time around but uh, pricing uh, post second straight quarter of inline pricing so UPL this time around was in line with what we had anticipated the other one is uh, the, if you if you take the sector as a whole, uh, banking and financial services are not the best quarters. Some of them did well. Uh, ICICI Access Bank was strong. Uh, SBI was strong this time around. But uh, the ILFS exposure hurt. You know some companies like Yes Bank, Indusind Bank, uh, Kerala Flood hurt. Bajaj FinServe, uh, Bajaj Finance was also was slightly moderately better than what was anticipated. Not the best of numbers on the financial side. Uh, uh, IT again, uh, you know no five 
frameworks this time around. Uh, Wipro and Tech Mahindra were weak, uh, and and it was maintenance of guidance as far as the other IT stocks was also concerned. Uh, the other one is Telecom was also not uh, not strong. Bharti Infratel did well than Bharti Airtel, but overall as a sector, uh, you would have to say it was rather average. Uh, metals again, uh, not the best of numbers. Hindalco managed to do well. It was mixed set of numbers. Uh, JSW didn't do well. Vedanta didn't do well. Coal India was pretty much in line with estimates. So metals as a sector uh, was, was was quite lackluster this time around. Well, and Dashan, uh, the disappointments, the bigger disappointments? Yeah, disappointment, first of all, uh, uh, auto. Auto was, was disappointing uh, this time around. Uh, as a sector, you know, some of them came out with inline set of numbers. Some of them came out with, uh, with, with uh, you know, muted numbers. But overall, uh, the demand headwinds is there. There is competitive pri pricing, weak monsoon, delayed festive season. Overall, not the best quarter that uh, auto had. Uh, cement also, Ultratech is the only one. Uh, uh, Multi-quarter low, uh, EBITDA of Patan is something that we saw margin pressure strong uh, margin pressure strong uh, pressure was uh, seen because despite strong volume growth and this was across the cement uh, uh, you know shocks uh, ultratech is the only one in the nifty but across if you see acc ambuja india cements all of them report, reported big set of numbers again uh, oil oil and gas as the space was rather disappointing this time around you saw how how crude prices paid, played havoc with the oil marketing companies but this time also reliance didn't contribute this time uh, gale was the only one that managed to do strong uh, post strong numbers so oil and gas was weak this time. Uh, the other sector that uh, we want to talk about is pharma. Uh, across, see, Dr. Reddy's optically was was strong uh, because of you know uh, uh, some markets doing well, but uh, <coughs> their core markets US, US didn't do well. Uh, Cipla was weak across, despite the tarot beat. Sun Pharma came out with weak set of numbers. So as as a pack, uh, pharma was also rather disappointing this time around.